today. So, Robert L. Dean, who do we have with us today? I want to make sure I say the, the last name right. Okay. You know, <laughs> Brian. And we go. You know say, it. Go with your gut. Go we, with your we, gut. We, we like popkin. Did we get it right? <laughs> Pop in. Pop, Pop in. in. See, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. See, see, we, we had to. You know, we we've been having this dialogue about yeah. how to say your name all day <laughs> Shay's long, Shay's name. And, and we wanted to make sure we got it right because, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, first of all, welcome to the Wake Up Morning Show with Dr. Lt and Robert L. Dean. Yeah. Um. Thank you. Honored to be here, man. Man, man we want to first start off by saying to you that um, um, everybody thought that you was just one of our light skinned brothers. Yeah. And 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 we still calling you our light skinned brother, you know. You uh, mean I'm not? Mother. I thought I was white chocolate. Well, well, oh, watch out! He said white <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> so 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 man, uh, we're so happy to have you on the show today. Um, I just want to start off by saying kudos to you for jumping into the genre of music called gospel and Christian music and leaving your own uh, your own imprint um on uh, on this genre so uh kudos to you, you first of all thank you that means a lot because you know i love the genre the genre is close to my heart i've always admired it um you know people think just because of a profile i don't necessarily belong or fit in but uh and that means it hasn't necessarily been easy for me uh but if you bring good music that maybe has the holy ghost in it hopefully uh and brings people some joy and some peace and is real music that you know i'm not an artist that just plays other people's songs you know mm -hmm. i write my own stuff it's birthed through trials and tribulations and hardships and struggles and i think that's what's beautiful uh, about not just diversity but i think that's what's beautiful about soul music and about gospel music it's it's real pain it's real hurt and and you sing about it because god gives you victory through it yeah well I, i'm gonna tease them because you know uh, both robert Odin and i are from the grand old church of god in christ and we say you oh, can't yeah. be born in it, you got to be joined in it. But we say the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And, and other people yes. say the Holy Spirit, but I heard you say yeah. the Holy Ghost. Holy so, Ghost. So, yeah, so man. talk to me a little bit about your church background or your spiritual uh, upbringing. So uh, my mom was a choir director when I was young in the Methodist church. Okay. And uh, they had hired her to kind of, you know, bring diversity, I guess is what you would say. Uh, but really what it did is it just taught us good old church music. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom played the piano and taught me piano. Uh, she wanted me to learn the old hymns of the church. So, of course, my mom was old school. So she taught me classical and she taught me, um, you know, uh, how great is thou art. She taught me, um, uh, gosh, great is thy faithfulness. Um, oh, how I love Jesus. And, you know, all the old old hymns. And so that's what I learned. And as I kind of experienced life from my own self and discovered who I was and figured out who I was and God showed me who I was, um, I realized that I just fell in love with church music because it had always been there for me. And God uh, was always my source. You know, I learned to worship through my struggles. Uh, but more than anything, you know, music was a ministry to me. And so a lot of songs that people have heard of mine, like I can make it, uh, you know, I got out, step a name, whatever it might be. Uh, have had been prophetic songs that were kind of ministering to me uh, personally. And then they maybe became theme songs for other people. But my background's old school, man. My, my wife is Assembly of God, but we've been married for almost 21 years. Um, and I feel like in modern church days, I miss the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I think we've, you know, we've gotten to a place where we don't have time for that. And I feel like we only need that, especially mm -hmm. in today's world. So, so let me say this, um, because before you even came on, people start banging on us um, on 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 the online, start hollering out the songs that they love for, from you. Uh, uh, like, oh yeah, he, he he could play the piano. They was giving us the interview before the interview started. That's how, funny, yeah. <laughs> how does it feel uh, to have such a great impact with your music to the point that not, not only are people tuned into your music, but they want to be tuned into your background. You know, I think there's a story behind every song of mine. You know, like I was saying, I mean, I almost went bankrupt. I almost lost my marriage. I, you know, was about to get a divorce, even though I didn't want that. I loved my wife. I just didn't figure out how to make it work. And God taught me I, I was repri I needed to reprioritize. I was putting my ministry first. I was putting my job first. I was putting writing and producing and all that first. And she wasn't first. And so 
um, you know, once I put things in line, God started blessing it and it became easier for me to do this, easier for me to do that. God started putting favor on my life. So I share these things with people along my journey because, you know, look, it's hard enough to connect with people in today's world because you're just another fish in the sea. But I think when you're genuine, um, you know, I do have some hiccups with what I look like, but it's like, I always say, I didn't choose this, man. I mean, you know, I'm trying to be what I am and I didn't choose to be necessarily what I look like. Cause if I orchestrated what I looked like, I maybe would have been a little darker. My nose would have been a little smaller. My ears would have gone in a little bit more, you know, right. I mean, you know, I would have been a little thinner, a little taller, but, but I didn't have no choice. Be in a that. Baller, so, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so have a little more money, you know, you know, all that stuff. But I think I just try to be transparent so that people can relate to my story and my songs because my song you might feel a beat you might feel that old school church clap yeah. and that might draw you in but it's more the message i mean w- these songs might encourage you but you're still going through your mess you're still going through your sh- struggle when you hit the pause button or when you s- get out of your car so what are you going to do now and i've really tried to, t- to show people look this is what i've done i got my knees on the ground i swallowed my pride i rooted out any cavity of jealousy of hurt of you know, insecurity, and I've surrendered my life to God, and God's blessed me, and He's put favor on my life, and He can do it for you too. That's why I say you can make it. Yes, man, and you can tell that you have an authentic spirit because I'm sitting here, and mm. it feels like I've known you forever. You're wow. authentic, and that's when you know the hands of God are on your life. People are always going to mm. say what they feel and think, but sure. you report what you believe. What you believe, yeah, what yeah. I believe. I'm going to yeah. believe the report of the Lord. And, and, yeah. and I'm just going to ask this question, you know, because, you know, you talked about the way you look at everything else that nature. I, I think that you got some thug tendencies in you because <laughs> you, you look like you can handle yourself if, you know, if we go and we in ministry and something go off, uh, um, yeah. I won't have to worry about calling nobody else. You'll be right there with us in the battle, <laughs> in yeah. the storm. <laughs> I, I, I'll help you lead right on the front lines, but that's just only because, you know, sometimes – you can take someone that might look like you, but put them their whole life in a different environment and they start necessarily becoming that, you know? Um, I always like the the, the cartoon Lion King because it's like, man, you're forgetting who you are. You're forgetting who you're called to be. And it's like that, you know, with human beings. And so for me, I, I was always raised in the church. You know, I worked with a producer out of New York City that wasn't saved. He was a Jewish guy, but he was, he acted like Snoop Dogg, man. I mean, he produced for Earthwind, uh, and fire and wow. uh, he produced for Shaka Khan. He dated Shaka Khan on and off. He was Stevie Wonder's best friend. So that's how I got to kind of also learn some good old old school funk and learn those tight bass grooves and, wow. you know, learn how to record them, how to track them. And, um, you know, that was like school of hard knocks for me. But more importantly, uh, you know, I, I fell in love with a, a genre. I fell in love with a music, mm-hmm. but there's more to it than a color or music Mm -hmm. or a genre. You know, we've really got to get a grip right now, especially in today's world. What is our foundation? It can't Mm -hmm. just be music. It can't just be, you know, uh, um, you know, a a culture. We we need Jesus. And Jesus is the only thing that's really going to bring us together and, and seal and heal some of the hurts and the sins of the past, because obviously I'm a sinner. um, And I know people, that have sinned, and we need Jesus, man. We, we we need him now more than ever to bring us together. Yes. Now, how did you transition into the professional um, career of gospel music? Well, I mean, long story short, without writing a book, which is coming out soon, right. um, <laughs> um, you got to make choices, you know? I mean, so many people come up to me, and they say, how do I do what you do? And I was like, okay, well, I'm almost which you guys probably won't even believe because you've only heard of me maybe three, four or five years, but I've been doing this full time in some facet for 24 years, full time Wow! Um, music, music ministry. So, you know, started as a concert pianist and did kind of like a, um, an ensemble thing and then started doing what I'm doing. But about seven years ago, I decided, um, I was, well, maybe nine years ago, I decided to move to Nashville, Tennessee from New Jersey, from the New York area. And that was a big decision. Uh, so that was the first decision that I said, okay, God, you do this. Mm-hmm. Um, my wife was in agreement. And the more kids we started having, and this is the truth, God started blessing me because I had a fear saying, well, if I have a child, I won't be able to support him. If I have a second child, 
God, how are you? I, I have like no money. You know, my bank account, I'm still trying to deal with redness in my bank account. Right. How? And so it was fear and anxiety and, and insecurities and all that. And the more kids we started to have, and I'm now up to six, um, <laughs> the more kids, I saw you look at me like, what? Yeah. No, no, <laughs> but the more, wait, the more. I, I was waiting for you to drop no, no. the number. Because I said, I said, this brother got a basketball team plus right. one. I bet you. I bet you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He got 12. But I've, I've never been more blessed with more kids that I've had because it's like God saying, I'm going to take care of you. Right. I'm going to provide for you. So, you know, you asked me, how did I get into the professional realm? I came to Nashville and for about two years, I went through the darkest times of my life, uh, struggling, you know, uh, trying to figure out how to pay rent, okay, where to okay, move hold, to. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to yeah. stop you right there. Now, because yeah. cause everybody ain't understanding the cultural shock. I need you to break it down coming from New York. New York. Yeah. I mean, to, to Nashville. <laughs> to so, uh, that, let's yeah. really talk about it. I mean, from the, the foodie capital. Yes. Down to Nashville. To Nashville. So, so yeah. go on with your story, but I want you to, t you know, talk about that shift. <laughs> well, I had traveled to Nashville a lot and, you know, I knew that it was kind of a hub for, it was becoming a hub for gospel music, mm -hmm. really. Um, a lot of your distributors and a lot of your mm -hmm. ministries, a lot of your networking type of, you know, uh, companies and uh, record labels and all that stuff are, were being formed or birthed uh, or growing out of Nashville. And so I, I, I knew that it would be a good move. I just didn't know how or who, you know, I didn't really know anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just made the move and I got involved you know, you'd be surprised. Most artists aren't even involved in their local church, but I got involved in a local church. Mm -hmm. um, I, I oh, teamed up with uh, um, some, some pastor friends of mine that I knew down here. And little by little, I started meeting people and I led some services here. And people that came to see me or just happened to show up happened to be tied to a record label. And uh, I got signed with E1 um, at the time. And then they formed like kind of a worship division. So they signed me to that division. It didn't work out. You know, it's funny how you think of life, but like you thought that was going to be your thing, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I got signed, blah, blah, blah. Well, that didn't work out at all. It was horrible, not a great experience. And they threw me over to the, uh, I can't even remember. I think it was called Light Records. Yeah, yeah Light yeah. Records division Light. Uh, with Gina. And at this time, man, you got to, you can't, I can't front on anybody because they're already busy with Jonathan McReynolds and trying to break artists that they've had for like two years that hadn't been broken yet. Right. And now they've got me who's kind of work. I mean, I'm work. You got to work me because, you know, it just, I might have some good music, but there's like immediately a wall. So you got to break down that wall. So you got to work harder. And they just, you know, it was just too much work. And so then I got dropped basically uh, another year and a half after that. And I was just at this place like, God, what now? Wow. And just straight up, man, I, I found a, a, a bishop friend of mine. Um, you know, there's a pastor, then there's a bishop, right? Mm -hmm. That's a whole different category. But right. we teamed up to start a record label, and that is the I Got Out project that most people know me from. Okay. And there were like four, four singles we released off that project, Step in the Name, Such a Time as This, mm -hmm. I Got Out, um, and All Back. Uh, is another one. So, you know, you asked me professional, my dad, if he was alive, would say provolone. That's what I am, man. I'm a provolone. But, uh, you know, professional, what does that mean? I don't know. I'm making music. People buy it, stream it, download it. And, and kind of some people like me. So that makes me happy. Right. I think it's great because you went through the process. You know, people want a quick fix. God yeah. was taking you through every phase so you can yeah. become what you are today. Yeah. And the only thing that's helping me exist today, especially with, you know, whatever you want to call it, this pandemic and COVID and all that stuff, mm -hmm. is owning my own music. Wow. Um, you know, if I was still with E1, this is just the straight up truth, but if I was still with E1, I, I mean, I'd, I'd have another job right now. But mm -hmm. the fact that I own my own music and licensing uh, off of the I Got Out project Residual. and yeah, residuals and it's helping me exist and stay afloat right now. And I'm thankful for that. It's really like manna from heaven, man. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm more thankful for that than anything, because uh, ain't nobody traveling, ain't nobody. What I do full time, I can't do right now. I right. can't travel to churches and do right. what I do, and that's how I am supported as a ministry full time. Right. Right. I don't have a local church that necessarily, you know, I'm a part of full time and supports me. So, mm -hmm. 
these times are difficult. One of, one of the things that I um, love talking um, to artists about mm -hmm. is that uh, we started our label 25 years ago. Um, our, wow. dist our distributor just left and, and moved the whole operation to Nashville. Um, the wow. one thing that always separated us from everyone else, everybody would say, well, are you guys too cocky? And I, cause I used to say, Sony can't do what we do. Uh, all these record labels cannot do what we do. And I said, the reason why they can't do what we do is because it is not the mantle that God gave them. When God yeah. gives you a mantle, there's no competition in the kingdom because that is where God has put you. And so when uh, God gave you a mantle and he then gave you someone to partner with, and because you, you have taken your mantle and you've gone forth, can't no one do your label like you do your label because of the fact is it's the mantle that God gave you. And because God gave you the label and the vision, he's now giving you the increase. So I want to encourage people uh, because I could care less if you light skin, dark skin or whatever. I look at right. the anointing in the in the ministry and we're truly seeing the anointing yes, and man. the ministry going something. forth. And that's yes. what's most important. And if we keep focusing on the anointing and the ministry and what it mm. does for people's life, then we can get past the outside appearances and literally get into worship where God wants us to be. Yeah. Wow. I, I mean, I'm with you 110, man, you know that. And, 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 and for those that are listening that want to do what I'm doing, you know, again, like I think I was starting to say it, but I forgot and I, I didn't finish it, but people come up to me all the time. How do you do this? And I, I say, you know, well, what are you? And they say, well, I guess I'm a singer. And I said, okay, well, have you put together, a demo or have you put together something on YouTube or mm -hmm. on social media with clips of where people can hear you mm -hmm. and see you, see your presence, blah, blah, blah. Oh no, no, blah, blah, blah. I mean, so that's like the first thing you've got to do, you know, get, get with a producer, get with some writers. If you don't write, um, get with somebody that plays an instrument. If you, if you don't play an instrument mm -hmm. and put together one, two, three of like your best songs that you think you really uh, showcase who you are mm -hmm. and men will minister to people, you know, and then, Make sure they sound good. Get with a producer that can, you know, s just slam dunk the tracks. Right. And you got to, I mean, look, besides the Holy Ghost, besides favor on your life, besides God calling you, all that stuff, he'll network you with the right people, but you still got to pursue and go after. Like my dad always used to say, you can't just be sitting, you know, on the couch eating popcorn and bonbons and be like, go ahead, God, work. Right. <laughs> you know, you, you got to put in the work and God will bless the work. And and I think that's really what it's about. Well, the word says that faith without works is dead. Yeah, you yeah, got, it's you dead. Got, right, you got sure. something to work with. Yeah, but some people got like stupid faith. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't mean good faith. Like, I mean like faith, like God's going to do all the work. You know, yeah, like no. they they just uh, <laughs> they they yeah. I, I call that dumb. Yeah, but, but, I, I agree <laughs> totally. You, 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 you know, they they expect a miracle each and every day. Like you know, Knocking now I've been singing. I've been singing all my life, and and um, I want you to know that God has anointed me to preach mm. the word. To preach the word. Yeah. But, this is but, what he but, said, bro. But, but not to sing the word. Listen to what he but said. I've been singing yeah. all my life. And see, some people— I bet when you preach, you sing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You got, you see, I got hit that's, people in the that, back. That's it, right? That's it, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but I want to say this is that that's the trueness that, you know, everybody can make a joyful noise, yes. but not everybody is an artist that is, is yeah. designed for this time and this season. Right. Now, I'm going yeah. to shift the conversation. Uh, I'm going to take it now home. You said yeah. that you have six children. Uh, right, I want right. you to shout out the ages. And <laughs> oh, um, wait, wait, and then, then I will say this. And uh, do we have another uh, a Popkin 5, Popkin 5 <laughs> coming up? Uh, and are you the new Joe Jackson? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, there ain't no more Poppins popping. <laughs> My wife, I, you know. My, my, I always look to her because she does all the work, honestly, man. I mean, you know, we just kind of have some fun and, and try to provide and trust God. But, you know, being a mom um, and my, my wife at a, at a, for a moment was also a single mom because when I married her, she'd already had a little girl. Mm -hmm. And so I adopted her and her name is Isabella, who's now 21 years old oh, wow. and going to nursing, going to nursing school here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really proud of her. She's been through a lot and endured a lot. Uh, but we have, uh, when we moved to Tennessee, we started really having children. My wife didn't want to raise them in New Jersey because we didn't have no money, you know, and she just uh, just didn't want that life for them. Right. So 
when we moved to Tennessee, we started having kids and we, let's see, I see, I always look at her to do the ages, but she ain't here. So I'm gonna try this. Um, so our youngest <laughs> is, is two, Matthew is two years old. And then we have uh, Joey, who's five. We have Gianna, who's seven. Sophia, who's nine. Max, who's 11. Two. And then Bella, who is 21. Did I forget one of them? I don't know. I don't think so. No, that was I think all I got them. all. But we uh, noticed you did yeah. it two years increments, which is smart. It, wasn't it seems bad. like it. Yeah. Well, I, that wasn't me. That was my wife. She's like, look, now's the time. <laughs> right. so, she, like, she again? Like, look, you, you ain't going <laughs> to change none of these diapers. Right, you right. ain't going to get up in the, uh, you ain't going to have to feed. So we're going to spread yeah. it on out. Right. And now the thing is, like, I, I, I tease her, right? And I'm like, come on, baby, we're going to have another kid. She goes, no, I'm done. And I'm like, oh, I like, you know. <laughs> right, right. Now, I, now, I have a question. Yeah. Who would you want to work with and collaborate with that you have not ever done it? With? Oh, man. Well, I am an old school cat, you know? So, so John P. Key, I mean, I can give you some, but John P. Key, Fred Hammond, um, Israel Houghton, I, I I gotta be honest. I like the old school is the yeah, most, like the, the the original praise and worship. Yeah. You know, cat. Yeah. Um, uh, I I love Ty Trivet. Uh, I've 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 opened for him a number of times, but I've never really worked or written with him. Wow. Uh, and I just am a big fan of his. I love Dietrich Haddon. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's a lot of artists uh, that I really admire and respect, and I, you know, I don't know if I would help them uh, with their gifting if I teamed up with them but there's a few that i think i could bring something to the table uh and i would love to at least be in the same room with them and write something you like real singers i, I was listening carefully you like real yeah. vocalists you don't you like me you don't like the fluff give me the real the real deal no and and a funny story about that is my my newest song um which it's i think it's almost top 30 but it's been out for a little bit but it's called beautiful savior and it's a little bit different than the old school church stuff I put out, but it it's shows my worship side because to me that is the bread and butter of how you live and endure life, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, get your knees on the ground and you worship through it. But this yeah. song's called Beautiful Savior, and it's featured by Tasha. It Right now she's Tasha, but it's always been Tasha Page Lockhart in our yes. minds. Yes, Um And she is a singer, man. And yes. so Her mom I, I – yeah, right, exactly, Lisa. And so I – one time I said – um listen, when you sing this song, you be you. And she goes, no, nah, no. Nah. She goes, I feel like this song's different. It's a little more contemporary Christian. So I'm going to sing it different. And I said, no, no, no. You ain't on the song anymore then, Tasha. Right. <laughs> she goes, excuse me? And I said, no, no, I want you. I said, you bring this grit and this, mm -hmm. you know, this, just, just, this, this, this. I want you to be transparent. Yeah, yeah. And be you. And I said, that's what I'm hearing on the song anyway. And that's what I love about diversity. You know, if we're going to go there and talk about it, I love the differences. I'm in love with it. Yes. I love some people's that hair is looking all whacked and some right. people's hair straight. I love, I love the spice. I love the non-spice. I love all of it. Cause if there was all Brian Poppins in this world, I, I couldn't do it. Right. I, I just, I couldn't do it, you know, but see, um, see I do love singers, man. I love singers. And then I hear all the parts, but gosh, I can't sing it. So mm -hmm. I got to get somebody to sing it. But you're smart cause you know who to go to to get what you need. I know who to go to, That's and I've got a good brother. team of people. Yeah, I got to give a shout out to Aaron Lewis. Um, he produced a lot for Kirk Franklin, James Fortune, and other people, um, Zaccardi. But uh, he's been like my best friend through this, man. And incredible musician, incredible producer, incredible writer, uh, and he knows everybody. So he's been a big part of my life and my ministry um, and my sound. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I can sing a little, but. I kind of I like to be more of a song leader to kind of like, okay, your turn. Okay, your turn. Right, you know, and right. I've got a great ear, but my 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 voice is keys. You know, you you give me a keyboard, I don't care if it's got twelve keys or seventy two or eighty eight. I'm a, I'm gonna play see, a little something. See, I'm I'm trying to see. He he see he's still yet giving me hope that that he loves all <laughs> the spiciness. He, he's, and, your, uh, yeah. and, he's your yeah. He's your but I give a little hey. Yeah, like he's, he's your true man, like James Cleveland. Oh. Off in the music, okay. Wait, did you say shh? Yeah. Shubba dubba dweeb dweeb dweeb. See, <laughs> see, 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 so check this out. Uh, 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 Robert Earl Dean, who's actually a, a national recording artist, and he is coming yeah. out with his project. And I'm, I'm, uh, uh -huh, I'm listening. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be uh, touring. We're going to be touring together. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, taking the radio yeah. station all over the country to all the people that have supported us awesome. after this pandemic is over. Um, the one thing about it, I keep on explaining to Robert um, that just because you're that national artist that you can sing, that I should be able to get at least a portion on it. But right now, brother, he's only giving me the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> coming to the stage. That's all he's yeah. giving me. Yes, but Brian, did, Brian did, hold on, hold on, hold on. Brian, I'm trying to tell you, man, but, yeah. if you put you put me on your project, man, I, it'll be gold. <laughs> it'll be gold. <laughs> no. Well, I had some friends of mine from church that are like, man, let me be on your project, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, sure, man. You know, it's all good. Come on out. Come to my studio. And so, clap. you know, we'll lay something down. Let yeah. Clap, so th they're in the booth and they're like, what do you want me to do? I'm like, I'm just going to put you in the red and you do whatever you want to do. So sometimes, you know, they're hooting and hollering. Sometimes they're clapping and whistling. <laughs> and sometimes they're screaming. Sometimes right. they sing a little something. Right. right. And so. I, they're like, well, you know, what, what do you want me to, to do? And I'm like, no, no, I got it. And they're like, what do you mean you got it? And I was like, I recorded all of it and I trust you. We, you know, we're going to use something in that. Right. And so we have used little pieces and snippets of things. And, and I'm like, hey, man, See? that was your hand clap. There's, hey, man, that was your hooting. Yeah. See, look, look, look at God. Won't he do it? Now, do you write for independent <laughs> artists who don't have huge budgets, but they have faith and they have love and they have God? Um, the answer, short answer is yes. Uh, long answer is I, I don't just write with anyone. I want to make sure that we kind of are in alignment, uh, and we have a vibe together. Mm -hmm. So I've had people reach out and we just don't have a good connection. And I've had some people reach out and it's like, we have an incredible connection. Right. Uh, I also love the beauty of co-writing because I may think of something and, you know, if I swallow my pride, they may think of something that may not hit me or may hit me, but if I trust their view, we might go down a path or a road that leads us to something great. Uh, and, you know, that's a beautiful thing. So co-writing yeah. is amazing. Uh, but some songs of mine, I just know no one should touch it because it was birthed specifically from a moment and a season. Right. But I might bring someone in to help me with the music or right. to help me with one line or something like that. Right. So how can people follow you? Um, tell the viewers and listeners how they can follow your ministry. Well, thank you uh, for letting me be on your show, guys. And Thank um, you for I being pray, on our show. Pray, cause you are yeah, man, I pray blessings. Yes. Thank you. I pray blessing on your project and your single and all that. Yes. Um, I, if, if you can connect with me on social media, then Instagram, it's Brian Poppin. So B-R-Y-A-N, Poppin is P-O-P-I-N. Uh, and you can maybe see some pictures of my family, my kids, my wife, uh, seeing us bump some old school Fred Hammond on our way to church or, yeah. you know, not necessarily in this pandemic, but, you know, just listening to music that also uh, inspires me and some scriptures that, you know, I, I hold on to and stuff like that. Uh, but if you want to do Facebook, uh, it's Brian Poppin Music. Um, Twitter's Brian Poppin. But my website kind of, they all come together. And, uh, you know, n during normal times, you could find live events that I'm going to be at and stuff mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. on my website, but hit me up on whatever platform you're on and hashtag the song, uh, whether it be, I can make it step in the name. I got out, right. um, all back favor and mercy such times as whatever song all in back. the history of my, yeah, all back. you know, Jesus. tag me and tell me what you've gone through, how it brought you through it or how it encouraged you because as artists and writers, mm -hmm. you know, that really, really encourages us and ministers to us that we're connecting with other people. Amen. Amen. Well, brother, we want to thank you and we want to let you know, shout out to uh, Dr. Beryl Howard, manager. Uh, who, yeah. who connected us. You know, all, all we're going to say is that that's big sis, She's little dope. sis. And, and we're going to have to get you to the West Coast now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and make sure it all happens. So you you now officially yeah. part of the GOD Radio One family. You can drop anything you want here anytime. Yes. We got we'll you debut it. as a Man, B BDS you. reporting honor. station. We'll rock with you, brother. I appreciate that, and I want to give a shout out to her as well, Apostle V, because you know there's few that you actually when you say, "Hey Doc, Hey Doc." And you just like kind of toss that out there. Come on. Not a lot are actually docs. Come on. But she a doc. Legit. You know, mm -hmm. she has been upgraded uh, to another level and platform. So just huge shout out to her. I love her like a sister as mm -hmm. well. And she's become a great friend. All right, yes. Ken. We want to throw out the song all back. Can you can you set it up and we're going to play it? <laughs> well, this is for those that 
um, have been through some stuff yes. and possibly now more than ever, you can connect with that line. Uh, but you come to a point in life and Bishop Jake's always used to say this, uh, when you're down, you have two choices. You decide to stay down or you get up. And if you're going to get up, then you might as well read a little bit of the word of God and realize who you are in Christ and realize that you're a king's kid. So you can take back your joy, even though you might not have joy right now. You can take back your true peace, even though you might not have peace right now. And you can claim victory in your life. Because why? We're going to take it all back. Oh, Let's go. Right here on GODRadio1.com. Here we go. <laughs> 